Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm John Rosinski from Okayama University, and... Uh, hello, I'm Peter Neff from Doshisho University in Kyoto. So, uh, like many of you, um, we've had many changes in the past year and a half of teaching, and the incorporation of humor into our English language classes uh, has been a big change for us with online teaching, um, sometimes uh, fun, sometimes very frustrating. So we were uh, curious um, to hear the perspectives of other teachers out there. So today we'd like to present a small study we did about this. So let me jump into my slides. So let's think back first of the uh, our teaching before the pandemic when we were in the classroom and uh, Peter and I and probably many of you were big proponents of humor in English language teaching. Uh, mo most of the research on humor and education uh, focuses on interpersonal benefits. But Gardner also pointed out how, as language teachers, um, we have even more potential benefits from humor because humor is uh, so tied up with language and culture. So, so much we can do with humor in our classrooms. And um, also Pomerantz and Bell talked about how the foreign language classroom is a kind of safe house because you know when you use English in the real world, it's very different and a lot of humor happens and you know our, our learners might struggle to uh, react to that or produce their own humor. But uh, the classroom is a great place to experiment with humor. So, but, we were thinking of what about this classroom? So uh, does humor translate easily into online language education? Now, uh, reading this article by Henderson, uh, he stressed that using humor is much more difficult. And I have to say, um, I unfortunately agreed with a lot of these points. So just saying, yes, check, 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 check. When he talked about all these issues uh, he faced trying to use humor in online teaching. Um, and a lot of these uh, will come up when we present our study in the qualitative comments. Um, but. I also heard from a lot of teachers that they were enjoying online teaching and online teaching, um, you know, presented new opportunities for creativity and humor. So we do feel maybe some teachers were more like the uh, image on the left, but some teachers also were more like the image on the right. Um, so again, we did a small survey and some follow up interviews to get more perspectives about this issue. So Peter now will uh, introduce our study. Peter, please. Okay, so yeah, as John said, we had our own somewhat varying reactions to the use of uh, humor in this new context of teaching. So we were curious how others had responded as well. Uh, so we did reach out. We finally heard from about 60 participants, uh, mostly but not exclusively from university uh, level teachers in Japan, uh, language educators. Uh, the key criteria we were looking for is, is participants who considered humor to be part of their uh, language teaching or their repertoire. Uh, this is just because we wanted to have a baseline from pre-COVID, how teachers then responded to the post-COVID online situation uh, and as a basis for a comparison. So we had uh, some Likert scale items, we had a few short response items, and we did do follow-up interviews with a few participants as well. Uh, we're still analyzing that last data, so we won't be talking about that in this presentation. All right, so uh, we focused on three main research questions. First of all, just generally did uh, instructors feel that there was a, a substantial difference between teaching with humor in online classes and teaching with traditional uh, teaching in traditional face-to-face -face classes, and how those teachers managed to incorporate humor into this new online context. And then finally, uh, we were curious what they felt were the main benefits of teaching with humor online, but also the challenges as well. Okay, so uh, getting into first the quantitative results, I'll talk about the qualitative results uh, in, a, in a minute. So we had four uh, main variables that we were looking at in the, with the, with the Likert scale uh, items. And you can see those listed down on the left. Now, 
Normally, when we collect quantitative data from a, a similar group of participants like university instructors, we tend to find that the responses align pretty closely. Not there are, of course, there is, of course, variation, but uh, um, for the most part, if if um, if there's an agree statement that most people agree, then we find that that strong agreement throughout the, the group. We did not find that in this case, and you will see the highlighted parts. These are the mean scores for uh, that uh, the range of participant uh, responses. So just taking a look at that first variable, contrasting online and face-to-face -face humor in teaching, we had everything from participants who gave a mean score of one, the very lowest possible score, to those who gave a mean score of six. Uh, in response to this, a six being those who felt like there was a great contrast and a one being those who felt that there was really no contrast at all. And uh, as you can see in the other variables as well as down there, there were again, great variation, a great spread of scores. So people really did have different responses. And then you can see in the next uh, slide that there is um, this is a sort of a visual representation of the score. So the, the horizontal axis shows the just the participant count cumulatively uh, from one to 60. And then the, the vertical axis shows the, uh, the de degree of agreement or disagreement each response, respondent had. Uh, so again, as you can see, we had everything from very low ones in some of the categories to up to full, full six uh, means full agreement with uh, things like, did, was there a contrast between online and face-to-face -face teaching? Were there benefits, were there challenges, et cetera? And then of course, everything in between as well. So there was, we were, we were surprised. Uh, we, we thought this was very interesting, but it also again reflected to some degree our own experience uh, teaching online with humor. Some people felt that there were great deal of benefit, that, the, that there was not much difference between teaching online and face-to-face -face, and others had quite different opinions. And again, a lot of people also in between. Okay, so with those quantitative, oh, oh right, I'm sorry, there's one more quantitative uh, table I wanted to show you. So uh, again, you can see the variables listed there on the left. Uh, this is a correlation table. And this looks for uh, how strongly, well, correlated uh, different variables in the study were. So if there's a, the higher the number, the stronger the correlation. And the two I wanted to point out, which are highlighted in yellow, uh, are the correlations first between variables two and three. So two is how much humor is a part of the teacher's online repertoire, and three is uh, how the benefits that the participants saw in using humor in online teaching. So there's a pretty strong correlation there between those. And correlation, of course, does not always equal causation. But what we can speculate is the teachers who tended to use more humor in their online teaching tended to find more benefit uh, of using that humor. Uh, and the other even stronger correlation was between variables 1 and 4. And that was a 0.7 correlation. So one is teachers who felt that there was a contrast between online and face-to-face -face humor when they're teaching, and four was the people who felt there were, there were per perceived challenges in teaching with humor online. So again, to, to speculate on, on the meaning behind this, uh, those who felt that there was a, a big difference between teaching with humor online and face-to-face -face also tended to find that there were more challenges or perceive there to be more challenges in teaching with humor online. So again, very interesting results. Uh, let's move on to some of the qualitative responses then. So I'm gonna go through some of the participants who felt there were difficulties, that were, there were struggles with, that struggled a bit with using humor online. And then John later is gonna come in and talk about those who had more success uh, with that. So uh, moving on to some of the quotes, I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna, sort of, I've taken out some quotes which we feel exemplify some of the main topics or trends in the qualitative data. First of these was the technical issues. So we all sort of probably dealt with this to some degree, especially last spring when many of us were learning to teach online um, for the first time. 
Uh, participant, this first one said, uh, using Zoom, the humor needs to be tempered by the attention to learners who struggle to even join the session thanks to technical difficulties. So yeah, of course, um, not everyone, teachers or students, was prepared for this new technical landscape. Uh, the second one also mentioned internet speeds being a factor. I rarely see student faces while in virtual school. If I can't read their faces, it is harder to gauge timing and a response. It's very true. Uh, internet speed could be an issue or just some students want to keep their cameras off, off unless you explicitly tell them not to. So if the cameras are off or the speed's not there, it's just difficult to gauge whether they're understanding your humor, whether the joke landed or not. Uh, so a very basic issue, but a very important one. Okay, so uh, another issue is of course, misunderstandings. Now this is not only limited to online teaching humor, but in face-to-face -face as well. But it, as participant one said, online interactions could more easily be misunderstood than perhaps in face-to-face. Or uh, the other participant said humor requires, quote, reading the room, which can be incredibly difficult in online teaching settings. Reading the room, of course, meaning to sort of look around and see whether each, everybody is responding positively or looks confused uh, or, or unimpressed with an attempt at humor. And when we're all in a 3D space, we can sort of look around and, and get a very quick uh, sense of whether what we're saying works or not, if we're conscientious teachers anyway. Uh, much more difficult in Zoom, again, with the camera issue, with technical issues, uh, just having a, a panel of faces looking at you, it, it, you kind of see them all, but you don't see any of them. So it's just a different setting, which can lead to misunderstandings. Okay, uh, another issue was just uh, what we mentioned before, the lack of contextual cues or clues. Uh, this person said timing, eye contact, and video audio quality uh, online tend to all make communication online more challenging. So this was a participant who did fall more in that more challenging end of the spectrum. And uh, again, these are things that were sort of built into us as from our very earliest stages as, as people, we learn to look out for things like eye contact, facial expressions, reactions, just much more difficult to do in this very artificial environment uh, that an online classroom presents. The last one I'll mention and then is restrictions on available humor. So uh, one participant said certain forms of physical humor are unavailable and a friendly classroom atmosphere is difficult to establish, which puts a damper on interstudent joking. And I, I like this because it, you know, we were mostly focused on teacher teachers using humor, but there is, of course, the possibility for students to use humor either to the teacher back or with each other. And just when everyone's in their sort of isolated box and their silo, it's just more difficult for everybody, including the teacher, including students, to, to use the, those opportunities to joke. And another one, this one particularly hit home with me, uh, spontaneity is more difficult online. And that is so true. You know, spontaneity, spontaneity arises from just those unexpected little moments in class that um, that can lead to a humorous, you know, a joke from the teacher, a joke from the student, something that uh, nobody expects, but we can all sort of laugh at it and is a little bit of a bonding moment uh, that can happen throughout the course or throughout the session. Those are just more difficult to do online, not impossible but uh, they are more of a challenge. Okay, so again, those are, those are mostly the challenges, but it's all, not all bad news. John is gonna talk now about some of the successes. Okay, thanks, Peter. And again, yeah, we did hear a lot of kind of horror stories like that, you know, uh, teachers talking about, you know, I love to use humor, but it's so much more difficult now, uh, really echoed the concerns in the article by Henderson. Um, but we, I think we got just as many, you know, let's say success stories of teachers who said, yeah, it's really not that much different, or even, you know, we have new opportunities with humor um, that online teaching, you know, creates some new, uh, new ways to use humor or other uh, creativity. So uh, just some examples of these as, as a couple teachers saying, you know, it didn't really change so much. So one participant wrote, you know, no humor, no fun, and that is not good. So I use um, the same type of materials 
as in the, or prompts as in the face-to-face -face classroom. And the key thing there, I just need to plan how to work it into Zoom. Um, so as T Peter was talking before about the importance of spontaneity and humor, but just like any aspect of online teaching, uh, we've we probably found that preparation takes more time. And you might think humor isn't something you prepare, but in this case, uh, maybe it was. Uh, on the other hand, another participant just said very, you know, plainly, uh, both venues, face to face or online, have possibilities for humor. You need to think about ahead about what works best in each situation. So again, although we think that humor is so spontaneous uh, in our English language teaching context, there is a planned element as well. And maybe this became even more true in the online context. So moving on, um, one good point, um, one teacher uh, participant said, you know, I still use the same materials, uh, humor in materials like I used to, and actually found the advantage of online pointing out sometimes uh, salient if PowerPoint is being used because it's easier to see for all students. So again, if you're using spontaneous humor, you know, that could go over the heads of many students in the class. But if you're, you know, re if you're, you know, online, we're now often sharing our whole PowerPoint presentations with students. So this gives them a little more time to digest the humor. Because think when you're looking at humor in a foreign language, it does take a lot of time uh, to digest. I remember, you know, back in face-to-face -face teaching a student writing in her journal that you told us, you showed us this joke from the sitcom in class, and I went home and I read it four times, five times, six times for two minutes, and then I finally got it, and I was laughing, you know, for a long time. So students do need time to digest the humor. And I think another good point, um, we often think of humor as uh, teacher created, but it should it, it should equally be student created, you know, maybe our using the humor can encourage students to use English and humor creative, creatively as well. So one participant talks about how uh, students might have used uh, humor in their Flipgrid. Uh, videos and I found the same thing and I wasn't really prompting them I wasn't saying use humor humor will make it better um, but I found you know students when they had the time to make these videos on their computer or on the phone uh, instead of in the classroom um, they had more time to be creative or humorous uh, why we have this uh, horrifying visual of natto um, just one example of this it's not really a humorous example but just shows the um, you know, the possibilities for creativity. Um, my students were giving a video about a uh, tour, a theme tour of Japan, and one student talked about having a tour of famous natto places, and the student actually opened a package of natto in the video and was stretching it to the camera. So this is something that would not happen, I hope would not happen in the classroom. <laughs> um, yeah, horrifying. But uh, online, it was great. And uh, it kind of encouraged the other students to say, well, I, I can be creative, I can be humorous. You know, this, this flip grid or video thing, you know, isn't just scary. Um, so that was a great comment about, you know, even online humor can help to make a, a class community community. Okay, so again, we've looked at uh, both sides, both the uh, challenges and the promise of humor online. And just, um, you know, despite these challenges, um, I thought this was a great quote by one participant. So in the first hand, they do talk about, you know, humor, like many aspects of online teaching, you know, Honestly, it is a big challenge, but they end with very important words. Humor plays a big part in learning and of life in general. So in spite of these challenges, I think it's important that we continue to use it as an essential tool in our teaching toolboxes. So yeah, absolutely, um, you know, humor can have a lot of challenges in this online format, but you know, it, it's still worth it. So let me just finish here with uh, three concluding thoughts, uh, both, both summarizing what participants said, but also um, thinking of me and Peter and our own, um, our own reflecting on this topic. Um, so first, just um, as one participant said, you know, 
maybe humor is not the priority as before. You know, I often like to make a joke in the first, very first meeting to kind of set the tone or help students relax. But the priority in online teaching is often, you know, to make sure can students use Zoom, can students do breakout rooms, you know, so be approachable, be helpful first, and the humor can come later. And uh, second, um, you know, a lot of these um, comments were about synchronous teaching, but we're still very divided. Some of us are doing synchronous teaching. Some of us are doing asynchronous teaching and humor can work in either format. Uh, but I think the types of humor and the preparation of the humor are different. So again, we love to be spontaneous, but humor also often does have to be planned. And finally, uh, about humor, online teaching in general, you know, we just need to embrace the technology. Uh, this period of online teaching has lasted a lot longer than probably all of us imagined, and still, unfortunately, uh, no immediate end in sight. So like online teaching in, in general, it's, it's very frustrating, it's very challenging, uh, but we found a lot of new opportunities. And I think the same goes with humor. Uh, we can find new and interesting ways to use humor in our online teaching. So those, those are three final thoughts to consider. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, and here is my email address too. If you did have any uh, questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact us. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right.